thank you for having me. And uh, this is, I don't know how many, what amount of times I've already uh, had the opportunity to speak to your group. But it's always terrific. Uh, coming down here, I told Anna, I said, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and Anna says, you kidding? I said, yeah. Uh, so, so there's going to be a few things, but they're all going to lead to the same direction. One the first thing, most people are far too polite, and a lot of people are far too shy to, uh, to uh, ask. But, and I've written about this on my blog. I think some of you read the blog. And uh, so a lot of people have said, we're really sorry for what you've gone through. Losing the farm over language issues. And well, let me tell you what it really is. So you won't feel bad. <laughs> Anne and I have been trying to sell the farm for a couple of years before the judgments came down. It became far too expensive for us to operate. It wasn't a working farm, it was a hobby farm, it was a toy. Toys shouldn't cost you maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year above and beyond what it would normally cost to them. And I, I know looking at me, it's hard to tell that I'm not a young guy any longer. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't do the work. It was just too hard. So we're growing hay and and and, and we're cutting trails and the damn grass had to be cut once every five days, yeah. and it took a full day, and myself, usually somebody we hired, it would take a full day just to cut the grass. I want you to know in five days we're doing it again. And that's with a huge tractor, like a real big farming tractor, a zero turn tractor, a garden tractor, commercial push mowers, whipper snippers, like I'm making myself sick just thinking about it. So we had decided to sell the property for various reasons. Number one, it was just too expensive. Number two, uh, it was far too hard for us physically. You know, it, it took away so much time from other things. And we love our horses. We'll never go without our horses till they die or we die. Hopefully, they go first. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and but we don't ride the horses any longer. It, it's a lot safer to go play in traffic in, in downtown than it is to ride horses, especially at our age. So we didn't have the need to keep the farm. So that one question about, I'm really sorry what happened forcing you to sell the farm. We were selling the farm long before. No one forced us into anything. Uh, we were very happy to sell the farm. We took a real bath on it, but we knew we were going to take a bath anyways. There's no there's no market for that kind of a property. It's just, again, it's too expensive. It's far, far too much work. It's like nonstop work. And it's, it's not like someone's going to come and move to Williamstown and, and try to maintain that property and then work in Montreal or work in Ottawa or somewhere else. So we're happy we sold the farm. Uh, about the language case, uh, so, our lawyers cost us $150,000, almost a penny. You guys paid a big chunk of it. Ann and I paid half. We paid about $75,000. And then when the Supreme Court refused to hear the appeal, which was in itself uh, as counter-democratic as you can think, at least listen to the appeal. This is an issue that affects all of Canada. Every living, breathing Canadian. Listen to the appeal. And then come up with a judgment. But they wouldn't even do that. So at that point, we were slapped with a $300,000 cost for the other side. So it was sort of jointly and severally. So they sort of split it up. And I think my share was... Uh, if I remember correctly, about 175,000, and Jean Serge was was something 75,000, and the lawyer was supposed to pay some. And anyways, 
the way it works, jointly and severally means if this guy can pay and this guy can, guess who pays the whole shot? Wow. Wow. I met, they, they, they turned it over to their own lawyers, they turned it over to collection agencies, and they made me an offer. It was actually a very reasonable offer. And I said, I've paid enough. I don't care what you want. There's no way we're going to sell our house and give them that money. There's no way I'm going to do anything and give them that money. None of us, the people who contributed to this fight, shouldn't have had to pay a penny. This wasn't our fight, it's Canada's fight. So why should it come out of your pocket? And how hard this gentleman worked, and how hard this lady worked to raise that money, or a good portion of it. So, I'm not going to pay, period. I just left it at that. And they called me and they said, look, I'm sure we can work something out. So they came down to $100,000 from three. Let's forget about it. They said, how does 50 sound? They said, why don't you make an offer? I said, I'm not going to give you 50. He said, make an offer. I said, the offer is the moment you try to seize, I'm going to go bankrupt. You will get absolutely nothing. So I was very fortunate over a long period of time since the 1980s, the the second referendum in Quebec. I knew, I, I never ever had intended to become uh, a social political gladiator. I never had intended to put myself and my wife in, in basically the bullseye. But it happened. Not because of planning, not because we're, there were intentions, it just happened. And I sold Ann, our advertising agency, literally for a dollar. We had all the papers legally transacted and, and, and put into her name. I didn't own a house. I didn't own a farm. I didn't own farm equipment. I didn't own a car. I'm not sure if I own the shirt that I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> and we're protected with a Quebec marriage contract which separates us as to property. Oh. What Ann owns, Ann owns. What I own, I own. And if I own nothing, then that's what my creditors own. Nothing. So, I, I was served by the city saying we want to have you come down for questioning on discovery. I assume it's to, to see what my net worth was. I picked up the phone, called the trustee, I said just do it. I'm not going to go through this any longer. I'm not going to pay more money for lawyers. What's the point? The judgment was final. I'm not going to win. All I'm negotiating is how much I'm going to have to pay. And I'm not paying anything. So they got nothing. The case cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars talking about Russell. Unfortunately, it didn't come out of anyone's pocket except the taxpayers, but the taxpayers deserved to, to get the hit because they didn't stand up when they should have. Mm -hmm. And when I sold the farm, we took our money, and we bought a really nice trailer. A great RV, 36 feet long, it's got two bedrooms, it's got an outside kitchen, it's like, it's unbelievable. And we said, we're going to take off somewhere warm, first time in our lives that we're doing this, and we're going to figure out the rest of our lives. I'm too old to start building another farm. We, we, we actually taught, we, we have a piece of land, a really nice piece of land, a one acre piece, all hardwoods, and we figured we're going to build a house, we're going to sell the farm, we're going to build a small house, 1,200 square feet maximum, like 600 feet per level, two levels, really make it. As, as energy efficient as we possibly could. <coughs> so we're going to do this. We, we priced it out, and it, it really, I like building. I'm really good at it. Uh, I, I use a hammer and nails all by myself, but I also hire a lot of good contractor subs to help. 
And then we started dealing with the township. Oh, wow. Permits, <laughs> fees. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We need architects, engineers. So this is nuts. This is absolutely insane. So then Ann does, <coughs> Ann does a spreadsheet. Unfortunately for me, she's good at it. <laughs> and she said, do you realize this mortgage-free house that we're building on a spit of land that we don't have to pay for, that's going to be really small, really energy efficient, it's going to cost us $60,000 a year after all the dust settles. Wow. And we have life insurance as well. We're, 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 we're <coughs> debt free. All we had were a couple of car leases that our company paid for. Still paid. And he said, 60,000 bucks. How the hell are we going to afford this? Which means I have to earn well over between, you have to earn well over $100,000, $120,000 a year just to keep the wheel turning. Because after the government takes their share out of this, I still got to pay taxes, light, heat, electricity, and all the other crap. I don't want to do this anymore. I just don't want to do it. Hence came the idea of a trailer. So I went to Anna and said, Anna, we're going to buy a trailer. We're going south. We're going to spend the winter there. We're going to figure out our lives, figure out what we want to do before we come back. <coughs> Anne cried. <laughs> she really thought I was nuts. <laughs> <coughs> then she checked out her own spreadsheet. <laughs> and she said, let's go shopping. So we bought this really great trailer. <coughs> We uh, paid off the leases on the cars that we had because we needed a truck. And <coughs> man, it cost a lot of money to buy out a lease. It was $10,000 for two cars. They are relatively new <coughs> cars. But still, so we, we did that. We bought this great truck. And we bought this great trailer. Never towed a trailer like that <coughs> in my life. <laughs> it's not fun. Hitched it up, we're off. <coughs> so our destination, our final destination on the trip was Austin, Texas, which is very much like Ottawa, by the way. Now Austin is a fabulous, it's an unbelievable city. So we go to Austin, Texas, and by the time we get there, I told Ann, I have no idea how this trailer is coming home, but I'm not pulling it. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. It was every time a truck passed us. I mean, the speed limit was 70. So I figured, I don't want them passing us anymore. I'm going to go 75. So he passes at 80. <laughs> so, and they suck the trailer in and out. So we, we finally get to Austin, and we're staying in what turned out to be the number one RV resort in Texas. And they sold it while we were there. They had 20 offers. Went up for, for, for sale on a Monday. By Friday, had 20 offers. It is a stunning place. And all of a sudden, Ann and I learned something that was incredibly unique to us. I'll share it. This resort, it's people our age. I'm guessing mid to late, later 50s through to their 70s. And these are all people, we, we have a nice trailer. So we pulled in, we figured we're going to be like the shiny kids on the block. <laughs> Got news for you. <laughs> so we're looking at trailers that are $100,000, a lot of motor homes that were hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, several that were millions of us. And then we discovered that the people who are staying there. There's about 200 or so locations. And, and, and it's really luxurious. <coughs> Swimming pools, hot tubs, they got function rooms. Wow. Uh, all, the, all the sites are separated completely. Like, like you really, you're not crowded. There's, uh, comes with, with high-speed internet and tele, and, 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 and uh, uh, all, every, every TV show you can want, like, including Fox News. So it has, all of this stuff, it's like just terrific. Mm -hmm. And then we discovered that three quarters of the people 
who are staying there are permanent. They're called full timers. Good Lord. This is one of the fastest growing trends in America. And these are people who are just like Anna and myself that said, enough. These are people who've retired in their 60s or very early 70s. And they realize because of the way the government is running, because of the taxes, because of all the rules and regulations, because of all of this, they can't afford to keep their homes. So how do they do it? The housing market sucks, except in Austin. And that's, that's a fact. Austin, Washington, D.C., and Ottawa, it's great. In the real world, it's not so great. So these people sold their houses for a decent pot. They bought these incredible motor homes, the trailers, hmm. and they found places like La Hacienda, where Anna and I stayed for five, five and a half months almost. And that's it, that's their lives now. Hmm. Many of them are still working, they work, they use the trailer as their house. They've got all the property they want around their trailers. <laughs> they, they set up these incredible gardens. They're beautiful, it's just, it's stunning. You don't have to cut the grass. <laughs> like, there's nothing. All you gotta do is wake up in the morning and plan how you're gonna enjoy your life.